I guess one of the things that really comes through from that film is the importance of always seeing people as individuals, not seeing them as patients, and particularly not seeing them as illnesses. What we have done in this country, I think, is get very good at treating illnesses, but what we have forgotten is that we are engaging with people. And however good we are technically, however many pain-killing drugs we produce, however many therapies we have, at the heart of everything we do, we must remain true to the relationships that we have with people and to reminding ourselves that we are all individuals and there has been so much in our lives that has defined who we are and we must never lose sight of that. Sadly, it echoes a number of the findings that we had at the King's Fund when we had an inquiry into care services for older people in London and we heard of, um, I'm afraid, the same kinds of problems around how people were treated, um, sometimes thoughtless behaviour, but sometimes even what we'd call abusive behaviour. Um, and so this was um, in, not only in the hospitals, but could be in people's own homes, could be in care homes or wherever. So we did hear in our, our inquiry about um, similar poor practice. But we also heard, I have to say, of absolutely excellent practice and we met with staff and we spoke with older people we spoke with their family and heard of people who went way beyond the requirements of their job to make sure that they were really engaging with people really hearing what they wanted and giving absolutely first-rate care often within the health and social care system when people are admitted sometimes in crisis there isn't very much time spent in trying to identify who they are and how they should be treated. We need to open the doors to our nursing homes and to our residential care homes. And this film is clearly one way of doing that. For 15 years, I worked doing research in establishments like those Amanda has described for us. And in 15 years, I continued to see the same practices. I saw good practices too, the kind of thing Penny has mentioned, and I've seen more and more reports saying the same thing. Of course there are good practices, but that film, those images, will have more impact than all the words written by me or anybody else. All of us sitting here are ordinary mortals. We expect to die. We expect to have health problems, but we are total round people and we want to treat each other as ordinary people. If we are seen simply as we go through those doors that bang close behind us, if we are seen simply when we go through those doors as the pathologists, the bundles of pathologies that have to be dealt with, medicalized, given pills to deal with, then we will never improve the way we treat older people and by extension, any other people who become a pathology or a bundle of those in our health and social care services. There are enormous numbers of new initiatives that are coming out and being rolled out in health care. And sometimes I wonder if we wouldn't be better spending our time just focusing on patients rather than on paper. We are, what, four, five, six years perhaps into the National Service Framework for Older People. That framework sets as standard one an eradication of ageism in healthcare, and yet still we see the experiences that were brilliantly identified in that film and, and were brilliantly acted by Virginia of a system which fails the patient. And at the end of the day, the biggest measure that we all should have is did we treat people with dignity and did we treat them with respect? And that should be how we as professionals and our system is judged. <laughs> I sat down and spoke to four of them last week, some of my residents in my home, and asked them what's important to them. And what they said to me, having someone to talk to, having somebody to listen to me, and having somebody to hold my hand when I'm lonely. It's not a lot to ask, is it? Looking back at that film, where was the human touch there? Those carers were talking over the patient. They were communicating with each other and not the person lying in that bed. I also think there are some big issues about particularly people with dementias. 
and how we work with them to understand what their life has been like in order to make sure that we show them both dignity but also that we frame the way in which we care for them in a way that's sympathetic to their lives. And one good example of that is the issue of communication. We're always talking about communication in healthcare and how we try and give messages to patients. What we need to start doing, though, is starting by asking patients or finding out from patients how they want to be communicated with, because we're all different. It is very sad that in our society, we, we culturally, we don't seem to value the family links that we can have, the understanding in different cultures, tribal cultures, in other countries. There is a respect, there is a continuity, an intergenerational exchange, which is vital. And I am passionate uh, that we understand that we need this within families. It's like a spark. And it, once it's switched on, I think it will reignite people. But, uh, you know, people need to look at family values, we talk about it in the government, but it's, this is deeper than that. This is about actually really looking at a way we can sustain relationships through communication and respect in the family as well. Family caring, spouses caring, doesn't stop when someone goes into a residential home. And I think there have been issues there where um, the home has taken over and then suddenly the person or the family, the daughter, whoever, have been doing the caring um, is feeling very much cut off. So I think there are major issues there. I mean, I mean again, it's hard to generalise because this doesn't happen everywhere, but it still goes on. So there's a big issue there about ensuring that the family who have cared continue to be able to care. There's a good dialogue with wherever the person is. Um, and that it's a sort of two-way dialogue. That, I think, too, is going to make sure we have much better care in the future. Training is also about not just the role that we play, but it's about the core values that underpin caring. And I think one of the things we've forgotten is that often in training, we tend to train people to do particular tasks, but actually what we need them to do is to remind them that they're working with people and that there are some core values at the very centre of the work that you do. And that links very much to what the lady from Haringey said. Um, I also want to pick up on Frankie Brasser's point from Westminster. I agreed with Frankie very much about how it's everybody's responsibility to make sure that quality is in existence. Uh, but I also think we need to remind ourselves it's not only managers' responsibilities, but it's every single person who delivers care should be reminding themselves that they're delivering it in a context, that there's core values that underpin what we do, and we're all responsible for that. So I think we should be really reminding ourselves that what care's about is not only functions, but it's about values. Training by itself will achieve not very much at all. Training reinforced by managers who value their staff, reinforced by the patients' valuing of the staff, will actually help begin the shift we need. My own research many years ago showed that within 12 months, and I'm astonished it was in six weeks, but certainly within 12 months, staff properly trained in the best possible way had reverted to the old ways of doing things because that was how you did it there. And those who didn't, were moved out and on, either of their own volition or because they weren't wanted. They rocked the boat. So it is not just about training and investment in training. It is about ensuring that the place where that training is practiced is open to encouragement and reinforcement by patients, we have, by us, by the older people who are there being served, as well as those who are managing that service. In my opinion, it's just another clipboard walking around the hospital. Um, I think all nurses should be delivering dignity and treating patients with respect. And if they don't, they're in the wrong job. I think you can enable people to learn to be compassionate and considerate. But if after that training, you don't see that happening, those people need to go because they're in the wrong job. And they will just reinforce bad practice. So we need to find ways of assisting to people to move after their training, if they can't implement what they've learned, to other places where they will be happier and cause no harm to anyone else. You can maybe not have that as your personality, it's not part of you, but if you are, can act it, 
and when you act it enough times, you can become it. And that can actually happen. I've, no, I've yes. known that happen for myself and other people. Not always. I am an optimist. But I do think that there is a possibility that there is another area for training which will get through to certain people, not to everyone, absolutely. One of the things we should do is remind people that if they work in a health and social care system, there is expected behaviour, and that's about the core values of the system. And if people are not exhibiting that behaviour, if they're showing bad practice, they should be called to account for it, because the baseline and the foundation of our system must be about respect for the user. Through this film, I've been so blessed to meet Rosemary Hurtley, Sarah Fraser, extraordinary trainers who have the heart and the humanity and the communication skills to deliver this training that is needed. I mean, it is humane training. It is looking at things in a different way without being patronizing. It's just saying there's an area, there's a chamber of our heart, mind, body, spirit. It's not religious. It's who we are that needs to be expressed. And the doctors particularly also need to understand not to be frightened of empathizing. They can still carry on their business they can still care and they can still have the ability to then wash those problems away at the end of the day. I think what we're saying is there is no one model of care because we are talking about people with different cultures, different backgrounds, different needs, different issues. Um, and indeed, we're not saying no one goes into the care home sector, they are, that's an important option for people. And we need to look for a whole range of options that will suit people's needs. Maybe we need to realise that years and years have been spent trying to train people to behave differently. Maybe it is we who need some training. Maybe we need some money spending on us so that we can learn to be more assertive, more not demanding, but at least enabled in a situation confronted by doctors or nurses so that we feel comfortable about saying just a moment rather than yes and no, sir, etc. What I'm not wanting to do is to criticise. This film isn't about criticism. It's about supporting a different way. And that's why I don't mention the hospital. I don't want to undermine anyone's confidence. I think nurses have it hard enough and particularly with the, the, the money and the, all that stuff at the moment as well, which I won't go into. But I think nurses particularly may not want to do this job if they know that there isn't the payment that they need or the respect from the management, etc., etc. So it is important to keep this momentum going from today, which has been a fantastic event, and to keep this building and building. And, and if nobody lets this seed die, you know, pass it down to the, the families, down the generations. I think the key themes are absolutely essential if we're looking for change is around involvement, involvement every single way, which will be in training staff, in developing new services, in helping to plan services, in inspecting services, evaluating new services, and in your individual services. Um, it's that way that we really will see change. And we know a lot of it is going on, but there's a long way to go, particularly across other services, to make sure that that proper engagement and involvement that really actually causes change. Ah, you, you are incredible. The last thing I would say is, I have to say, that the word training came up over and over and over again. Keep that in mind. And volunteering to do things for yourselves is a very good idea. Thank you to a superb panel. They're absolutely marvellous, every one of them. I think a special thank you for Amanda, who, as well as looking absolutely smashing, has produced a great film. And thank you all for letting me come and, and, and chair you again, and happy journey home.